Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. If you're familiar with this channel, you'll know that I have certain traction on my videos starring this VTEC V Smile unit, and you know it has lots of oh, so big. You have lots of games here. You can see Winnie the Pooh. Um, this particular unit has a touchscreen control pad. It's very swish, very nice microphone. Everything your kid needs to play some nice games. Now the problem with it, with it, my one no longer looks like this. Well, I say my one. It was really my kids um, because it looks like this. It developed a fault, and I basically opened the PCB to found the battery door had uh, battery had you know leaked into it, and it was a kind of a cheap design. You can still smell it. it. Smells a bit weird, acidy. So I've cleaned the PCB, reflowed it, uh, fixed uh, some dodgy looking caps. And frankly, you know, I'm even looking now, I can still see some crud on there. I just couldn't get it to work stably. I could very, I could just about get a picture, get it to come on, and then when I put in a cartridge, it would die. And frankly, these things are so cheaply made, they're really not worth persevering, because it'll only just fail again. You know, it's, I'll just show you the PCB. It's a sort of big blobs of gunk on the PCB, and you can't really tell what's underneath there. Um, so what I thought I would do, I would thought I would just, take this case and rip out the guts and fit one of these and you've probably recognized one of these as a Raspberry Pi 3 and that's a single board computer with an ARM core, uh, micro SD, four USBs, Ethernet, built-in Bluetooth and built-in Wi-Fi, that's a mouthful, uh, and running uh, a retro emulation suite. I'm going to turn this piece of uh, crap really, I can't even show it to you, it's all in, so there we go, into the ultimate retro uh, console and it'll be a stealth console. I've already started an experiment with the joysticks and you can see I've actually converted this one into a USB joystick and it's amazingly good on Neo Geo games so that's great that actually worked out really well that panned out panned out for me luckily enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove you know I've seen two minds about this because it's got the USB cable I can use it on any PC but on the other hand it's not stock so I'm going to probably fit this PS2 adapter that it came with, this is the original plug, that's what the VTEC uses, back on it and wire that internally into the USB bus for the Raspberry Pi and then get a second controller and then uh, do the same fix on that. So then I'll have basically a, a dual uh, player arcade system. Any additional players can connect via Bluetooth controllers. So uh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to crack on and probably just jump cut again through this. I'm not going to show you every little step because, again, frankly, if you're going to do this yourself, you're already that way inclined. You'll just discover it. You're not, um, you know, I'm not any cleverer than you, trust me. So if I can figure it out, you can too. For this project, though, you'll probably need uh, some skill with a soldier iron, certainly if you're going to attempt to do something like fitting a USB controller in one of these. So jump cut, let's see. After studying this for some time, I've made certain discoveries and what I can do is I'm going to see if I can keep the composite connection. That'll be interesting because traditionally Raspberry Pis did allow for the composite connection so I'm going to see if I can keep that. I'm going to try to keep the on off buttons on the front and retask those because really you don't have on off on a Raspberry Pi it's permanently on but I'm going to retask them as a probably a reset button and probably a spare GPIO so maybe when I hit this button it'll always take me back to the menu and I'll hook that up onto say general purpose IO lines. The microphone, there's a microphone in this unit which has a push button here so I'm going to try to hook the audio up from the microphone into the mic in uh, on the Pi unit. Uh, if the Pi unit doesn't have a mic in I've got one of these uh, auxiliary sound card, USB sound card adapters that will be compatible with it. So that'll be neat. So I can still capture uh, sound if necessary. If it, again, if it's not supporting the board. I haven't really checked the Raspberry Pi specs, to be honest. And there's actually a button on that microphone. So again, that button is uh, activated to, uh, just comes out on the wire. So I'm gonna hook that on a GPIO. So that when you push the microphone, that can be an additional input for something. Go back to a menu or reset again. Um, Looking on the back, you'll see there's a power port that comes in. I'm not sure if I'm going to retain the use of this power port because it's a little bit dangerous because if you plug in anything above 5 volts into the Raspberry Pi, it'll blow up. So that's why they use a micro uh, USB connection because micro USB spec is always 5 uh, 
volt soil up to 5.25. Um, so unless I had to add, add additional regulation circuitry, I can't really use that. But it depends how stock I want to make it. You know, once I once I get going with this, I might decide not to bother with the composite wire and not to bother with the um, DC jack. If I do away with both of those, then why bother keeping that part of it stock? We'll see how I uh, go once I start ripping that apart. Any other observations? Oh yeah, the battery door here for the uh, cells. This is what caused all the trouble in the first place. So what I might actually do is from the inside, I might just grind away this entire battery uh, compartment so then I have a, a, con a convenient pack panel to get to the Raspberry Pi inside. So if I locate the Raspberry Pi just under that panel and then uh, maybe orient it so I can get to the SD card or the USB ports, that could be quite useful for me, some sort of future expansion. So I'm just going to now just cut all these wires off and really just dump the main PCB and uh, try to probably assemble it a little bit back up, you know, and then just sort of play about with where I can fit all the uh, bits and bobs. I'm back. I finally got the Raspberry Pi in. You can see it's sat there now nicely inside the case. I've actually hot glued the wires at strategic places because I don't want them uh, popping out and I've actually glued the unit in just using the black hot glue. And at the back, you can see I've retasked the original AC adapter port to be the HDMI output port. And where the original composite wires came out, I'm rooted the actual power wire. So that will work brilliantly. So all that's left to do now is I'm going to have to wire the USBs now to the front panels, which are kind of PS2 style connectors. And then really it's kind of done. I can just play with it. And just one little element of detail here I wanted to show you. You can see you've got the micro SD card here. And if you flip the back, open the panel, you can actually get to it. So you see it just there, you can just see it barely, but it is there. So it does give you the option of accessing that in the event of a corrupt SD card. So now let's uh, get the USB on it and see how it goes. Finally, the Raspberry Pi is mounted and you can see now at the top of the screen two new USB ports that have been kind of hot glued in to some degree. Um, I removed some of the strain relief so it could bend around at that angle. They've been wired in now to the actual ports on the front of the unit and I've done the same to the joystick. So all that's left now for me is to actually just wrap it all up, put in the screws and plug it in and that'll be the moment of truth. It's been a long evening but I finally got there so let me show you what I've ended up with. So you can see the console here and in it I have my gamepad and uh, I've wired up both ports now so it doesn't matter which port I plug it into it will still work um, so when I get a second joystick I can USB fi that and that should work as well. I've done a little mod while I was putting this together inside I drilled a hole and put this USB 3 hub in here so I could use uh, external joysticks and devices. Something interesting though, know, Raspberry Pi doesn't seem to work well with a USB 3 hub. In fact, um, it doesn't seem to work at all. Uh, there's a little weird way you can get around this, that if you plug a USB 2 hub into a USB 3 hub, then it will allow the protocols for USB 3, uh, USB 2 to work. So, for example, if you've got a uh, pen drive, a gamepad, you want to plug it in here directly, it won't work. But use you plug it into a small USB 2 hub and plug the USB 2 hub into here and it does. So, you know, I thought that's just something handy in case I need to plug a keyboard and mouse or something, do some configuration. So just to show you, it's pretty much stock. The only thing that gives it away is this LED light here you'll see, and that's because of the LED in the Raspberry Pi. That's not a bad thing, really. All the feet are on and it's nice and robust, stable, sits there. And just to show you, I'm gonna hook it up, look up to the screen. So the unit is actually powering this. Um, you can see I'm moving through all the menu options. So if I, for example, just select here, Neo Geo, let's see what we cover, go at Blazing Star. It's always a good reference one. So just to show you how I've mapped the keys, I believe one of these. So I put the help button adds coins. And then this button here should be start, there we go. 
Unfortunately, I've got the buttons mixed up. The red button and the yellow button should be the other way around. Yeah, that's not a problem. So there you have it. That's the uh, VTech V Smile console. Um, it works great. So. There we go. So I hope you have a go at building one of these. I think it's a really great take on some old hardware and it just, it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna leave this now in the lounge with the kids and I know they won't be able to break this in the same way that it breaks a standard PC. So once you've finished your build, you can get to sit down and enjoy the fruits of your labor. You can just about see the screen here. Um, I've got a selection of games from NES Neo Geo and a few CPS titles. The actual gameplay is really good. It's it's a lovely fluid system. If you are um, that way inclined, please install Kodi, K-O-D-I. You'll find that in the menu for RetroPie as one of the add-on packages. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the joystick as yet, so you have to have a key keyboard's probably the best way of using this if you have one plugged in, which I currently don't. But uh, basically, Kodi is the Xbox Music Center, so it allows you to play, uh, you know, video and things like that from your devices that are plugged into the USB ports, but also it allows you to stream video from YouTube and other online services. So all in all, this little gadget here with its uh, dinky controller that's very tough, um, makes an excellent uh, lounge uh, media center slash game center. I've had this on now for about um, 36 hours or so and running, you know, streaming video and playing games, playing games when the kids have been on it. And uh, yeah, there's no uh, sign of it overheating or performance being degraded. It's not even really warm to touch at the moment. Um, uh, just seems to work really well. So please have a go and feel free to leave a comment down below. Ask me any questions you like. And uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, please click subscribe and that way I know what you like and then I can make more videos uh, that will suit you. <laughs> and as ever, thank you for watching.